Welcome back to the channel. Um, today is radio programming day for me. I have uh, four of these that I'm getting set for uh, various folks. And uh, you can see I've got this one scanning. Sorry, I'm <laughs> turning it the wrong way. Um, but um, in some ways it's kind of sad because that means this is going to get reprogrammed for somebody else and it's going to go away. I've got uh, several pages of notes uh, you can see here where I've jotted down frequencies of GMRS repeaters and uh, the way I'm setting these up I'm actually setting up uh, amateur radio uh, frequencies as well so they can monitor uh, what's going on these are meant to be emergency you know if things are bad and communications are down I'm trying to give them some options um, because as I've said a few times, our region had a hurricane go through that caused tremendous flooding, devastating, catastrophic flooding um, that has knocked out communications to many places. Uh, this was in September. I'm still seeing people pushing to get GMRS repeaters up in many of the affected areas because they have decided they need a plan B. I've got comments here in some of the earlier videos about people that, hey, I've just got my GMRS license. Hey, we've got a neighborhood uh, uh, network of GMRS uh, where my neighbors have these. We're kind of centrally located. They communicate back and forth through us and we can keep tabs on everybody if something happens. And I think that is fantastic. And so I had started thinking, well, um, maybe I'm going to do some radios as part of my Christmas idea. But I'm also going to, um, each one of them, I'm going to have one of these little uh, kind of job protectors with a sheet of information in there. The channel listing, uh, I'm going to have uh, some notes on the back. I'm going to have my GMRS license. Um, and give them some basic info about uh, if they want to get their own license. They, it's easy. Um, give an idea of repeater operation, giving you more coverage, and that's why we've got these programmed. And um, they're going to three different locations, basically, uh, four individuals at three different locations. So I've got a long list of things sketched out for them. Uh, the main reason for this video, though, is more to do kind of my longer term, I guess, two to three week use review of the TID Radio TDH3, uh, which I'm just gonna say, when I bought the Baofeng GM15 Pros a um, couple months back, um, I had wanted to get this radio instead because I had spent some time researching and it was like, okay, well, the Baofeng seems good, but I really think this one might be a little bit better. And uh, after using it a while, yeah, it is. I should have gone with this one. The reason I didn't at the time was shipping. I needed it by a certain date, and the GM15 Pro was the only one I could get by that date. And so, um, so I'm a little sad to see these getting wrapped up and going away in a sense. I'm going to try and get a hold of one of these for myself here soon. Um, not that I'm going to... Uh, just throw the Baofangs out to the dogs um, and, you know, toss them <laughs> to, to oblivion. But um, I'll keep them around. It's always good to have compatible radios. That uh, I've got some older Motorola blister pack radios that are compatible with these for many things. So um, I'll definitely make use of those as well. Um, USB-C charging means that it's going to be easy to wa uh, find ways to charge it for a good while. Um, what do I like so much about this one that would make me want to trade it out over the Baofeng? Um, well, one, it has 200 channels where the Baofeng has about 54 pre-programmed and then I think you can get another 40 in there. I don't remember the exact limit right now, but you can't transmit on anything else that you add. And I don't mean anything outside of GMRS. I mean, if you put a GMRS frequency in memory slot number 57, you're not transmitting on it, at least from what I've found. I could be wrong. If I am, correct me. Let me know in the comments. Uh, this one, it doesn't matter if I have 30 repeaters on the 550, uh, 462, 550 that I'm trying to program, 
I can do it. I can put them in memory bank 186 if I wanted to. Um, and so really and truly, that alone makes me like this one better. Um, it is fairly easy to use. I like the display on it. I know you've seen me try and give you the display on the Baofang here on the video, and it's just the monochrome display. It does not show up well on video, and, you know, it does okay in day-to-day -day use. This one does too, and it's easier to read in a lot of ways. It packs a lot of information. I like having a lot of information. You can simplify it. I like that. That's great. Um, getting to FM radio is a little different on this. Um, it's like memory and then eight. Um, I've got it set up. I programmed this button for the weather band, so I've got a quick access there. That was my one dislike about it, is that I had to program it to get us an easy way to the weather uh, outside of remembering, you know, channel 192 or whatever the preset was. And um, so all in all, that's good. Battery life. I really need to talk about battery life. I did not charge this one last night, and I did a fair amount of listening. And let me see if I can press a button and get the display. We're at two out of three bars. I'm not sure how well that focus is. I know it's a blob on the screen there. We've got two out of three bars. I purposely didn't charge it last night. I usually just plug in everything at night out of habit. Uh, because there are days that an 11 hour day has cooked this one. It's done. It needs to recharge. Um, yesterday, let's see, trying to think through what I did yesterday, um, it wasn't necessarily, well, it may have been an 11 hour day because I think, uh, I think we had it going easily from, um, let's see, 11, 12 at least until three in the morning, maybe. Um, and so it was on all that time. It was receiving a lot of that time. I had it on and receiving, had the volume up. Um, and so I didn't do the two hours of FM radio test yesterday with this one, but I did about a week or two ago. Um, I think I had told you once, the Baofeng. I did two hours of FM listening and then left it scanning the rest of the day and it was dead by probably nine o'clock at night. Um, so about 11 hours of use and the battery was drained. This one, I did the same kind of test a couple weeks ago, um, where two hours of FM listening and then left it scanning all day. Uh, after 11 hours, it was at the two out of three uh, battery uh, positions there. Um, had a good deal of active time when it was scanning because in addition to the GMRS, I've programmed in some local repeaters. I've even programmed in some, in some local public service frequencies to monitor. Um, and it did great. It, it, I should have tested it to see if I could get through a second day like that. That would have been awesome. Of course, it is a little bit bigger battery. But the other thing that I really like about this, and let me bring this other one back up so you can see the side by side. Um, you notice how it's a shade smaller, um, even, I know I don't have the belt clip on this one, uh, which I'm sure that will change it a little bit, but I've even, you know, gone and stuck it in my shirt pocket, or my, I've got a jacket pocket, uh, because we're in cold weather now, and it makes a nice, quick, easy way to carry it. Uh, of course, I don't have the big antenna, as you can see, the big one is on the uh, Baofeng. If I had the big antenna on the TID radio, it would probably alter that equation a little bit as far as sticking it in a shirt pocket. But I gotta tell you, I've tested it with uh, the stock antenna that you see here and the, um, uh, well, this is an Aubrey 771 GMRS. I think it does pretty well with the stock uh, antenna. Um, I've been impressed. A lot of times stock antennas are really lousy. It, it's like you're deaf. That much said, I have monitored and I can tell just a little subtle difference going to the uh, bigger antenna, but it's not much. It's not enough 
uh, to make it worthwhile day to day to do the big antenna. So I think um, I think with these, I may just leave the little stock antenna on it. Makes it a lot easier carrying around. It's also a sturdier antenna than that one. Um, I'm always afraid we're going to get that one closed in a car door or bent or broken or something. But um, I definitely keep the uh, big antenna around just in case. But yeah, that's it's done pretty well. Um, what else do I have to say about it? Probably my biggest dislike about it is that it's only 200 memories because I would love to have a radio that I could just go ahead and pre-program for not just all of the local repeater frequencies here and the GMRS, uh, you know, 2 meter, 440, 220. I would love a radio that I could get those preset for here as well as for areas that I might drive to, like to the south in Asheville, to the uh, west, you know, Knoxville and on that way. Um, I'd love to be able to have a thousand memory banks in something like this. Um, and of course, as I've said a couple times before, weather alert would be a feature that I really think would be a great add. Um, cheap radio manufacturers, you will save lives if you add NOAA weather alert. You really will. Um, please consider adding it. It's, it's, I think, a very important and useful feature. We've got the battery that can charge either through um, the USB-C port. Um, I don't have the, well, I do have the dock for it. That's right, it came with the dock. So we've got either the dock or the USB-C port for charging. Uh, programming, you know, we've got our Kenwood ports, and look at that, there's a USB-C. Uh, so we could do either of those to connect to Chirp at the computer, for instance. And then we can do Bluetooth as well. And so uh, I think Chirp is a little more fluent when you're doing a lot of big changes. But for little, oh, I need to fix this one code, you can connect it to your phone if you don't want to navigate through the menu. And you can do it that way. The menu, that much said, is really pretty easy to navigate. Um, let me get our scan stopped. Scan lost. There we go. And let me get to channel one. Mm, actually, no, let me do like uh, 23. All right, so here we've got one of our repeater channels. There is our menu and bandwidth, scan band, DTMF speed. I just scroll through. I think I scrolled the wrong direction. And I always scroll through because I can never remember where the shortcuts are. Um, everybody's probably got it in a different place anyway. Um, da, 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 da. Here we go. There's the transmit CTCSS. If I wanted to change the code, I press the menu again. I'm down in that area. I change it. I come back with the menu button again and it's saved. Um, or if I want to save it to a different memory, I go and I pick a memory that's not um, in use. And we've got another repeater programmed. Um, in contrast with this one, if we try and program past their DIY, uh, you know, their first 54 memory banks, we won't be able to transmit. So um, if you have a lot of GMRS repeaters in your area that you have custom tone settings for, I would go with this one. Um, in fact, just overall, if I had the choice between the two, I would probably go with the TID radio um, for most any use. I, I'm trying to think right now as I'm saying this, what situation would I pick the GM15 Pro? And it, I'm not coming up with one right now. Um, it is pretty easy to use, and so is this. Um, I have done a little bit of configuration with this that I didn't have to with that to make the weather band more accessible. Um, but really and truly, I think this is the better radio. 
I would highly recommend it. It might be a couple dollars more than the Baofeng. Um, that might be the one plus the Baofeng has. Um, I'd love to see if they had another um, iteration on this, and, you know, their next version, what that would look like. But for right now, I think this would be my pick. Um, I've got to say, if it had a, a thousand memory banks, I could even see uh, replacing the Baofeng 5RM with this one because you can switch between GMRS and ham bands on this. Um, you can also unlock it for everything, which takes us into some questionable regulation territory. But this was sir sold as a GMRS radio and is type accepted as that, even though there's the ability to do the firmware reset to be able to transmit elsewhere, which at some point, I wonder if the type acceptance will change, if there will at least be a strong letter, uh, some sort of communication about, hey, wait, you can't do that, we're going to have to lock the firmware so a GMRS radio is only a GMRS radio. But uh, to be honest, this is one of the other reasons I was interested in this one, is just to see how easy it was to switch back and forth, and it really is. Uh, you lose your presets if you do that. Uh, any configuration, if you change from ham to GMRS or vice versa, or to the normal, which is the completely unlocked, you got to be careful with that. You got to be careful with the programming of that, that you don't transmit on frequencies you're not allowed to. If you interfere with public service, you will get a visit <laughs> eventually, um, because that's a big, big one right there. Um, now, let's see. Um, I liked it for the fact that you could switch back and forth and wanted to see how easy that was. Um, if you do that, what I would suggest you have is either on the phone or in Chirp, set up a couple of different profiles. Like this is your uh, GMRS setup and this is your ham setup. Uh, if you do a normal um, config to, you can do it on your phone through the OD Master app. You can do it in Chirp on your computer, but just have different profiles set up, and then you decide to change back and forth. Okay, well, let me re-upload my uh, settings profile for this one, and you're good. You're all good. So, um, anyway, it looks like there's some traffic on one of our local uh, repeaters there. But I would highly recommend this one. Um, like I say... After the dust settles here at the holidays, I think I'm going to try and get at least one of these for me. It'll be a compliment to what we've already got. Um, that's the way I see it. I like us having some options for communications. And if we are ever in a situation where we need to hand half a dozen people some radios, we can do it. And that's, that's good. But anyway, that's what I think. If you think differently, if you are just like, no, you're absolutely wrong. The GM15 Pro is the best GMRS radio ever, and here's why. Leave me a comment. Let me know about it. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe for this video. And um, before we go, I want to give a little plug out to um, Ham Radio Prep. They um, have been gracious enough to give a special promo code for all of their courses, any of their courses, 10% uh, off. If you use the code RADIOCOMS, R-A-D-I-O-C-O-M-M-S, at checkout, uh, they will help you get your uh, HAM license. They have courses on um, shortwave HF operation, uh, on emergency comms. They have a Baofeng crash course. Um, they, um, I have heard really good things about them. I had somebody comment here that it was three weeks from the course to getting his license. And so he was a technician, uh, I think. Um, tech, general, extra license, any of those, if you're looking to upgrade your license, check them out. Um, there's gonna be information down in the description here. We do get a little bit back from it if you do go that route and use the promo code, and we'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, share this with folks and comment um, below. Thank you so much for tuning in and y'all take care.